Hello everybody, I'm Karina Chen with KarinasCreations.com and I just wanted to say hello, thank you so much for stopping by. I'm going to show you how to make a really, really fun card today that hopefully you can use for a spring or a summer wedding. So let me just turn this down right now so you can take a look at the pretty card. This is what we're making and I'm just turning it like this. So this is a really fun card because it looks like a bridesmaid and then when you open it up there's your bride. So it's kind of a dual card with a little bit of a surprise. So I'm going to show you how to do that right away. Before I start I just wanted to first of all thank everybody who liked or shared my video last week. I really appreciate it. I've been trying to do a little bit more online stuff, trying to find some online customers uh, who might want to get some Stampin' Up! products. So every time you like or share my video, it just helps get my name out there. So thank you so much for doing that. And let's see. So what I did, everyone who liked or shared my video, your name goes into a draw to win a prize. The prize this week is going to be to love what you do and share what you love kit. It's got some tags in it. It's actually called the Share What You Love Embellishment Kit. It's got some tags, um, a little bit of, I think, silver thread in here, a couple clips. It's super cute. So you can use it on a lot of your pro uh, projects. So let me just pull out the name. And the winner is Carolyn. So congratulations, Carolyn. Carolyn's actually on my team. She's been on my team for... I'm losing track of how many years it is. But we have a really fun group that I called crafting that I call crafting crew and we get together every single month. Uh, this month we're going to be getting together on April 17th at Boston Pizza because I'm throwing an on stage after party for everybody who has a starter kit for me and we're going to get together and I'm going to show them the new catalog. So it's like a catalog launch party. So if you're interested in coming, let me know. And if you want to get the starter kit, it is $135. A lot of people on my team, they don't um, necessarily run classes. They just need the 20% discount because they buy lots of stamping stuff. So there's lots of different ways you can get involved with Stamping Up. The other thing I quickly wanted to mention is Stampin' Up! has a brand new product out called Storage by Stamping Up. And I have recently bought, we sell a product called Blends. And I'm buying the Storage by Stampin' Up for the Blends. Of course, now I don't know where my sheet is. I thought I was so organized. Looks like this. I've got all the information on my website at uh, Karina's, karinascreations.com and I bought the blends one. In fact, I was so excited to get this, I had to expedite it. So hopefully, I live in Canada, hopefully I'll get it by Thursday at the latest because I have over 60 blends now. They're sold in a package of two and this is how I've been storing them. But they don't all fit and they're not together and it's a little bit messy. So that's why I thought I'm going to try the storage system. So once I have it, I will share with you what it looks like. Okay, let's just tuck that aside. I'm trying to think what else is new. I think that's all I was mentioning. If you wanted to order any of the supplies today, I have put the host April Hostess code on here. If you're ordering more than $200 worth of stuff, don't use the Hostess code though. Either shoot me an email or you get to be your own hostess. And of course, I can always help you place your order. Okay, let's get back to the fun part, which is the stamping. Now, hopefully I won't goof this up too much. I just made this late last night because I fell in love with the Wonderful Moment stamp set. I actually got this back, oh, I think last August. And I really, really like the different images. I do a lot of birthday cards, so I thought this image was great. And I don't have too many pregnant friends, but you never know for the future working ahead. And of course, bride cards. I always get asked if I have wedding cards that people can buy from me. So I'm going to make up a whole bunch of these, a whole bunch of wedding cards. So I thought that would be a fun set to play with. The other thing I like about this set is that there's outside greetings and inside greetings. I love it when you could just stamp a greeting on the inside and you can just sign your name. That saves me a lot of time. I don't have to think about what I'm going to say. Okay, so the first thing we need to do, again, this is the card. Let me see. I've already prepped myself a kit. 
just set this aside. So I'm using thick white cardstock. And the size is eight and a half inches by five and a half inches. And I've already pre-scored it at four and a quarter of an inch. And I've got my bone folder. I got this at center stage. The last center stage I went at. And this just helps you get a nice crisp fold. You can buy these from the catalog. Okay, that's the base. And then we're gonna need to use the layering uh, frame, circle framelit dies. Now one trick is to keep all my dies together, I went to the dollar store and bought um, a mag magnetic sheet. So it just helps keep everything together. Oh, I see Sandra's here. Hi Sandra, thanks for watching me. It just helps keep all my little dies together. And then I don't lose them. And then when I'm running a class, I actually went and got a cheap picture frame put a magnetic sheet in there and that's how I'm storing my dies so that when I'm doing the class, the dies aren't on the table because it's amazing how we just tend to lose things when it gets on my messy craft table. Okay, so I'm gonna bring in the Big Shot die cutting machine. Make sure it's in here for you. I'm using my magnetic platform and my plates, you can see they're well loved. I've been cutting a lot on this side, so I'm actually going to flip it, flip it around a little bit. Okay, and this is my front, which means that I want to cut a circle this way. Now, you can see I'm using two sizes of circles, so they have a little bit of space in between them, and I need to cut the small, use the smaller size to cut my hole. And I'm making sure that I have enough space around here that I'll be able to put uh, the glittered frame that I'm creating with my circle framelit. So I think that looks about right. Maybe we'll move it up just a little bit. Okay, now I'm pulling this one off. We'll leave this one here. I try to have an equal amount of cardstock showing on each side. Okay, I think I can live with that. Now we'll just put the top on and then we're going to send it on through. And at the end of the month, I'm going to do another Facebook Live party. This is going to be on a Sunday night. I have to check the date. But I think it's fun if we stamp three projects. And I think this time I'm going to give you a supply to do one of the cards so you can stamp along with me. If you live in Edmonton, Alberta, you are welcome to come to one of my card classes. I have two a month for sure, a Monday night and a Wednesday night. It's going to be next week. I know it's not. Or the week after. Yeah, it's not next week. It's in two weeks. And we just make four cards. Okay, so I have this now. Now what's the next step? Oh yes, we have to do some stamping. So let me take my kit, pull it aside. Now there is a brilliant project, or project, there is a brilliant tool that Stampin' Up! sells, which is called the Stampin', not the Stamparatus. I always pause because we used to have a product called the Stampamajig, and this is 50 times better. This is why. Okay, I'm gonna put this down. It's fabulous because it comes with two plates, and the plates lift out. So you can use it at the top, you can use it at the side, I can turn it around. It's open if I have a 12 by 12 inch piece of cardstock. I just can't say enough about this tool. It's actually a stamp placement positioning tool. And we'll see if my um, little girl is okay from the last card I made. Yeah, so what I did was make sure that my stamped image of my bride is in the center of my stamped circle. Now, before I did this, you see how I have a little piece of paper here? You can buy these extra pieces, these grids, to go with your Stamparatus. And all I did was take my girl, um, I laid this down like this. this right into the corner. I might as well do it for you. And then that way you can see exactly what I'm doing. We'll place my little bride there so that she's centered. And then I'm going to close it up. 
and now she's perfectly positioned to do some stamping. Okay, now I want to stamp her on the inside and I'm gonna be doing some embossing. So the most important tool for embossing is this little guy. He's called an embossing buddy. He's not very expensive. I keep saying he. I don't know, is it a girl embossing buddy? It's an it. Let's say it. Okay, and the next thing I'm going to do, I need to move my big shot to get some space. This plate will fall to the side and if I don't want it to fall to the side, I need to, I usually have ink pads on my table. So I'll put a Stampin' Up! ink pad here because it keeps it flat. There we go. And then it's not flopping around. So you can see I did the embossing buddy in the center of the card. And what that does is it removes all the static from the card. And then when I go to emboss with my black embossing powder, I don't have little bits on there that I don't want. Okay, so you can see I got a brand new VersaPad. Oh, that's so pretty. Makes me so happy. Okay, and all I'm going to do is stamp down. And I like to use the heel of my hand. Whenever you're using photopolymer stamps or some of the images, along this crease you sometimes need to apply extra pressure. Because I'm embossing, I want to make sure that it's going to be nice. Okay, and I don't know if you can see that. Okay, hopefully that's okay. And now I'll just take this and move it. Oh yes, I am going to need to use it again. Okay, so I am using some black embossing powder. Oh, I'm almost out. I need to place an order. And if you don't have one of these little trays, just use a piece of paper that's been cut in half. And I'm just flicking it because I don't want these little powdery bits. Oh, their little bouquet could be a bit better. I still think that'll look pretty good. Okay, and we'll set that off to the side. And now I'm going to bring in my heat tool. This is another trick I have. I took an old clipboard that I bought from the dollar store and I like to clip it on here so that I don't burn my fingers. And we'll just hold this in place. And then there are two speeds on the heat tool. So this is a light speed for drying. Number two is for embossing. And I usually hold it in one place until I start to see the powder melting. And you just want to go all around. Look at it in the light. No, nope, her hair is still not embossed. It needs to be shiny. There we go. And can't look powdery anymore. I think that's good. Okay, and then I'll set this aside. Now, you see how I didn't quite get all those areas? You can take an old blender pen. So Stampin' Up! sells blender pens. I've marked them old because they're basically destroyed. I was going to throw them in the garbage, but watch what you can do if you like. This is my trick. So I'm just taking a tiny bit just on the side where we have Versamark refill. And I'm just going to go over my flower. And again, do you have to do this? No, absolutely not. But I just wanted to, we'll see, this could be a huge mistake. But let's see. Let's cross our fingers. Just wanted to fill in the flower just a little bit more. Oh, yeah. Look. See? That worked pretty good. Hey? There we go. And then I'm just going to emboss it again. I just wanted the flower filled in just a little more. Now it looks like some of the roses have extra shading. I think I got that. Yep. It's done. Ooh, isn't that a great way to fix things? Whenever you come to my classes, you can learn from me that anything is fixable. 
whether it's an online class or whether you're in my in-person class, there is never a mistake. There is only an opportunity to make it more beautiful. Okay, now this card is so pretty. I actually could have just done the corners, added a greeting sentiment, and then you're all done. However, I wanted to add a little bit of wow, a little bit of pizzazz to this card. So Stampin' Up! sells some vellum cardstock. It's a special cardstock. It's a little bit thicker than usual. And my measurements are uh, four, four and a quarter by five and a half. And now I need to stamp the bride exactly in the same spot as before, but this time I'm going to use clear embossing powder. So let's pull in my Stamparatus again. We'll open this back up, put this in the corner, and I do have a magnet that will hold it in place. I'm just so lazy I don't even use it half the time. And I'm going to re-ink up my bride. Make sure I get the flowers this time. Maybe there wasn't enough ink on it last time. Because it's clear embossing powder, it's going to be hard to see. And I'm just going to make sure I press the flowers really good this time. And let's see how that looks. Yes, it's perfect. If it's not great, then I would just use the Versamark pad again and redo it. But this looks perfect. Okay, I am very happy with this. So this is why you need a Stamparatus. It, it's a miracle stamping tool. I love it, I love it. Okay, this is now clear embossing powder. For colors, embossing powders that I use all the time, I have a little Tupperware Rubbermaid container. And that way for my classes, it's just always ready to go. Okay, so I don't know, you probably can't see this image because it is clear, but again, we're gonna take the heat tool I'm going to put it in here so I do not burn my fingers. I burnt my fingers one time embossing, or maybe it was with the glue gun. That was not fun. Let me just sit. Okay, and then this will turn clear. And if you are doing this card, you don't have to use clear embossing powder. I could have done black. I just thought this kind of makes it more like a magic card. Okay, that is really cute. Now there's a trick now that I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna put this away because I'm done with that. We are going to color the back of my bride with Stampin' Blends. Stampin' Blends are an alcohol marker. Like I said, they come in packs of two and I'm putting this behind it just so I can see what I'm coloring. Now my bride, she's gonna have blondish hair. I'm using Dark Daffodil Delight. And the reason I'm coloring the back is if you color the front, my clear embossing powder lines will actually get colored, which isn't a problem if that's the look I'm going for, but it's not. Okay, and let's give her a, what color is this? This is light, flirty, flamingo. No, dark, dark. Dirty flamingo. This isn't very dark. You know what? I think I grabbed pink pirouette. I'll have to go get flirty flamingo because it's a little bit darker. Da 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 da. Color, color, color. Okay. Let's just see if I have my flirty flamingo in this. Hmm, I don't. That's okay. We'll just go with it. How does it look on the front? Does it look like pink still? Ish? It does. Not too bad. Otherwise, I'll pull out my other ones. This is why I want my Stampin'. Oh, here we go. This is why I want my Storage by Stampin' Up. Okay, let's do this again. Oh yeah, look at that. Better because it'll all be at my fingertips. Oh yeah, this is a lot darker. This is Dark Flirty Flamingo. Don't you love these names? I think Stampin' Up should pay me to come up with really fun names. I think I could come up with some great ones. 
Okay, what else do I need to do? We're going to color the bouquet of flowers a dark highland heather. Just because I think it's fun. Oh yeah, doesn't that look pretty? And I just think I just want to go over this. I didn't do this in my other card. But I just want to go over the straps of her dress and make them pink as well. Okay, that is looking pretty good. Now I'm also going to use, pull out my, what is this, ivory? Yes, it is. So I'm just going to do her skin tone ivory. And she's got two arms that I can color. Oh, where's her other arm? Okay, how does that look? You got to flip it over sometimes to kind of see it. Okay, I think that looks pretty good, you guys. I'm happy with that. Okay, let's set that aside. Now, when I flip this over, I'm going to show you another trick. When you're working with vellum cardstock, if I take my snail adhesive and go along the back and then place it in, you are going to be able to see the adhesive. There is, I have not been able to find any adhesive, vellum adhesive that will work. So what I discovered after doing my last butterfly class, vellum card class, is that Stampin' Up! sells a product. It's a Sizzix product called the Multipurpose Adhesive Sheets. And what I have found is that if you cut a thin strip, peel off the backing, you can actually use this as adhesive and it works pretty good. You can't, it's not as noticeable. I'm gonna snip that off. So this will be for my next card. And it's kind of, it's not that tricky to work with. The hardest part is peeling off this top layer. And then I'm just going to lay this, whoa, along the back. Oh, oh. Ooh, I gotta commit to this. There we go. Commitment issues. Whoa. Okay, there we go. And now that tiny little strip, you won't even be able to notice it. Let's just see. Put this down here. You're probably seeing my hair in the video, but that's okay. Okay. Look at that. Notice my limit, my image is lined up. There we go. Isn't that pretty? Now, can you see what I did, guys? I did it backwards. Oh my goodness, seriously. Because I wanted it to be on this part of the card. Okay, you know what we're going to do now? This is kind of funny. So, we have a product. You're probably thinking, oh, she did this on purpose. I guess I could say I did, but really I didn't. We have a stamp and eraser. Do, 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 do. When you don't want adhesive where it doesn't belong, you pull out this magical tool called a Stampin' Eraser. Okay, and then let's go over this part. We're going to get rid of that, and it just removes it. This is pretty funny, hey? And then it just pulls it off. There we go. I used to do stamp classes at my kids' school when they were younger. And whenever I pulled out this tool, all of a sudden, all the kids kept making mistakes because they all wanted to use the eraser. It was pretty funny. Yeah, so if anybody does uh, have kids and they want me to do birthday parties for kids, I absolutely love it. That's one of my favorite things to do. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, it's a good thing I have another one. We're going to peel this off. We're going to snip it here. Let's put this the right way. Okay, this just makes me want to laugh, you guys. Because it's going to go like this. So, remember how I said everything is fixable? Well, that's true. Okay, here we go. And we'll peel this back. 
Let's see. I've almost got it. So I don't know what your favorite thing to work with is, but I love, I've lately been doing tons of vellum projects. Oh no, it just won't come off for me. Seriously. Let's just snip it a bit. Oh, this is too funny. This is why it's a Facebook Live. Hmm. Okay, there we go. No, it's not coming off now. Dump, dump, dump. Okay, hold on a second. We'll go like that. Uh, what else did we need to do for this card? We need to do the sentiment. Hmm, nope, can't get it. Oh my goodness, this is just too funny. Oh, there, I think I've got it. So I don't know what everybody else was doing on the weekend. I had a great weekend. I had my nephews come up from Calgary. And it was so fun. We went to the dog park. I don't have a dog anymore. But I make a great dog sitter. And uh, we had Mortimus. And Mortimus is a huge dog. He is a mastiff. And he's a puppy. I tried to describe the size of him. And they said, I keep calling him saying like he's a baby dinosaur. Because he is so huge. But it was lots of fun. And it was so nice here in Edmonton. Okay, so that's what your card looks like now. Now let's get out some. We sell some glimmer paper. This is... Uh, rose, I believe, glimmer paper. And this is where I'm pulling out my two frames again. Here we go. Okay, and I'm putting one down. And then I'm going to put the second one down. And my other tip is, let's pull out the washi tape. There we go. And I want to make sure I have the same amount showing on each side. And I'm going to create a frame for my card. Sandra said she used her eraser this morning. I'm telling you, you guys, that Stampin' Eraser is one of the best things I ever purchased. I think, I think it's around $5. And I do when I have blue messes. And it's not that I couldn't have left the card the way it was. I just didn't want to. When you're having a Stampin' Eraser, yeah, you get to make that decision. Okay, so I think we're finally done with that. And now to put the frame on, I'm just going to grab the Mono Multi Liquid Glue. There we go. Okay. And we'll add our little glitter window. See, isn't this cute? It's coming along. Looks good. Uh, the next thing it's missing is a little strip of paper. So Celebration just ended. And they had this fantastic paper called the Botanical Butterflies. One side was butterflies. One, another side was just black and whites. And I know Celebration is over, but if anybody places a $60 order, you're welcome to have a package of it. I have four packs left. Because I am a little bit of a... Stampin' Collector. Isn't that a nice word? Stampin' Collector. Okay, let's see. Okay, I just created a pen and shape. So let's put that down. Oh, let's put that down right about here. And I think we'll just get our Stampin' Snail. Okay, there we go. We'll put that down right about here. Okay, and then the next thing, we need a sentiment. So I'm going to put for the bride, and I've got a little piece of white scrap paper. There we go. Oh, guess what I forgot to use? Oh, oh. I didn't use my embossing buddy, but I think I should be okay. It's just, see, I got a little bit of static powder where it's not supposed to be but that's okay 
Now I'm not getting my little clipboard, it's just off to the side. And again, you just hold it in one place till the powder starts melting. Dum da dum da dum. Okay, there we go. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is grab the Stitched Labels Framelit Dies. I love these things. They have so many fun little pieces and they just add a tiny bit of stitching at the side. So if you own a Big Shot, I highly recommend this set. And then of course you should always get like the basic shapes, which would be the circle framelits I just used or the squares. We also sell stitched uh, stitch shapes as well. Okay, I'm doing this sideways, hopefully. Can you even see this? You can't even see this. Well, let's put this back into the frame of the video for you guys. There we go. And we'll just roll this quickly through the big shot. Okay. There we go. See the little stitching at the side? It just adds just a little touch of interest to your card. Okay, and the next thing I wanted to do was, this is totally optional, but you know, we sell rose metallic thread. I put a little bit of tape on mine just so it doesn't go crazy. And I'm gonna put two Stampin' Dimensionals on the back. And we'll peel this off. I see Denine's here too. Hello, Denine. I just dropped Denine's present off. She won the prize last week. I just dropped it off to her house. I mail a lot of things with Canada Post. Oh my goodness, postage can be expensive when you're mailing door prize stuff. Okay, so there we go. So I just wrapped it around my finger three times. Make sure I've got this the way I want it. There we go. And now I'll put it over here. We're gonna put for the bride and I'm just centering this over my strip of cardstock. And then to finish off the card, well I should show you two more things. I'm gonna add some sequins, but I thought it really adds a little bit of interest to your card when you round the corners. So we sell this detailed trio punch it's got three shapes it's got a corner rounder a little detailed shape and this is actually a kind of a hole punch and a little hole punch that you can use see how easy this is you just have to line up it's got a little guide and that's it isn't that cute and easy peasy Okay, now to add my sequins, doo, 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 my sequins are right here. I'm using the Iridescent Sequin Assortment Pack. Now there's no adhesive on this, but we do sell products that do have adhesive. We have a whole bunch actually. Uh, Denine says it's better to get together to visit with you when I drop it off. Yes, that's the other reason I do drop things off because then I get to talk to people. And then Denine, I get to see your puppy that you keep posting about. I'm a dog lover. I absolutely love puppies. In fact, I babysit my brothers once in a while and I had Benji on my little video, but he would not look at the camera, the little stinker. Um, I am using, what is this tool? Uh, we'll just call it a stampin' tool. But it's got putty on the end, so it really could be a sequins picker-upper. Okay, we're gonna flip this around because I want it this way. And all I did was put little dots of mono multi glue, And this has to be your last step because it takes a couple minutes for this to dry. Excellent. And we'll put one here and then one more. You can put as many as you want. And then we'll put this back over here. Okay, that is my card. 
So we've got this. So I'm calling it a magic or a surprise card because it's a bridesmaid. And then when you open it up, it looks like a bride. So today you've seen lots of things, how to uh, remove adhesive when you mess up your card like I did. And then how to make a nice little window with your layering circle framelits. How to use the, I forget what this tool's called. Oh, take your pick tool. How to use your take your pick tool. And I hope I've given you some ideas and I hope you'll try this card. And if you make this card, feel free to send me the picture and I'll even post it on my blog of what you've made because I think this would be a really fun design to try. So thank you so much to uh, for stopping by. And if you like or share my video, um, I'll put your name in to a draw to win next week's prize. So thank you so much for stopping by and have an amazing day. Bye.